Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. We have heard Dr. Ratna in last two lectures about large scale data sciences. Today in the last lecture he is going to continue sharing more information about large scale data sciences. Dr. Ratna will talk about proteomic data commons PDC and about its various dimensions such as ownership of the data, the quality management and life of the data. He will also talk about FAIR principle for developing a proteomic data commons. FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable FAIR. It includes assigning data and patient a UID unique identification which remains same across the world and hence reusable by the users. The importance of management and upgradation of the repository with unique UID and versions with reason. So, to understand in depth let us now welcome Dr. Ratna for his last lecture. This is the minimally viable product that I talked about uh, pdc.esacking.com. This is an alpha program. So, it is even before beta like I said. So, uh, feel free to log in. I will show I mean I will run you through that uh, some screenshots of how the portal looks. Uh, yeah, but feel free to log in and see this is ok. Like I said this is a minimally viable product. All of the CP tag data portal data sets that you see the uh, colorectal cancer, ovarian and breast cancer data sets that are available where you just download the information. All that is actually uh, harmonized to PDC. So, you could actually explore all of those data sets here to a much greater extent. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what goes into the management there is stewardship who owns the data. So, once you put it there. Uh, it is done, yeah. am I the I mean is PDC the owner of the data or you still have it uh, that is called stewardship and then data governance uh, what is the life cycle of the data who will what, what kind of uh, policies that will guide the uh, open access of that particular data and then all other things about the standards and the processing and quality management all those things are attached to the uh, large scale programs all right. So, we have to represent the data in a certain way right. If we are if I am getting data from so many different programs, so many people are submitting uh, how do I represent as in a common model. So, I need to have a conceptual model. So, this is our um, uh, conceptual model. So, because all of this is cancer related data to begin with. So, this is patient centric uh, I'm not talking about any um, model organisms and so on at this point, but uh, even from model organisms the data can fit here it is pretty easy. Um, so, you have a program project a case is basically a patient or a donor who gives the tissue and then from that you get a sample. So, there is a lot of clinical data that is attached to a case right. So, clinical information is attached to the patient and, and the next part I am showing this part right now. So, then you have an aliquot that is what actually goes into your mass spec right. So, that from there you generate so, you, you, you group a bunch of samples to run as run it as an experiment or a study and, and then you have all of the run metadata that is nothing but that your experimental design where we are capturing it and then you generate the raw files and then we run the workflow. So, when I run the workflow it generates other information. So, every piece of information that the software generates we index it. So, it is captured in the model. So, when I ask a question about which proteins are expressed in this particular aliquot or a sample I have an answer for you right that is because we have a model. So, we are trying we are working hard to actually define this uh, we try to fit all of the CP tag data in this model and it is working quite nice, uh, but there are lot to un, a lot of unexpectations that have happened right. So, uh, if, 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 if there is something that comes up that actually needs change in the data model then we have to do it, but for now it is working all right. So, then uh, there is this data dictionary. So, every node in this graph is basically uh, we have a description of it. So, you can go there and try to understand what it is and each of these terms are actually we apply standards to that. 
so for example, here diagnosis and, and, uh, and demography. So these are all clinical terms there. So are we using certain standards, for example, ICD codes to define the disease or the SNOMED CT terms? All right. So then uh, I will briefly talk about the FAIR principles. So when you are developing a data commons, the guiding principles for such a kind of effort are called FAIR, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. <coughs> so what is findable? So like I said, every piece of data that comes in, whether a patient or the file. So we will assign a unique identifier to that. As we call it the UUID, global ID. And then we attach a lot of metadata to it. So it's unique in the system so that nothing will change ever. So even if there is a change, we will version that. So how, why it changed and how it changed so that you can always refer back to that particular patient successfully. And then there is at the file level, most of the times when you start downloading or uploading files, they get corrupted, right? So what you start uploading and what is received at the end, you don't know if they are the same or not. So you think you uploaded some file, and, but it's not, it's not fully uploaded, it gets corrupted. The same thing when you download and you don't realize that there is some error occurred somewhere and you start processing those files and it will, you will, your software will throw error, but it's very difficult for you to understand why the software is throwing error, right, in the first place. So that's why we record a lot of metadata that's called MD5 or SHA. It's, these are called checksum values. It's a small datum that is attached to a digital object. Uh, so you generate that locally on your computer. You upload the file and the receiver, you will give him this MD5 value. So on the receiver on his computer, he will generate the same value and compare this value, the, uh, what you are giving and what he received is the same or not. Basically, it confirms that the data is end-to-end -end, uh, transferred completely. So all that information will be uh, captured as a metadata. So basically, you can find any file or any entity in this model by a particular unique ID and with the uh, att attached metadata. And then accessibility. So who owns the data and what is the life cycle of the data? So when you first generate the data and put it in a system, like in a PDC, so you still own the data until you make it public, right? So the so user has the authority to tell, okay, this, this is the time I want to make it public. Or my program requires me to publish in a particular journal, then I, then I will have to make it public. So, and some of it can be protected, especially in genomics, we know that all the uh, germline mutations are protected and you cannot just download. So, uh, there is a data access committee and you have to go through that whole cycle to actually get the information. And then interoperable. So, interoperability is basically about the control vocabularies, how we are defining the terms. Like if you are calling trypsin, are you calling trypsin all the time the same way? So, it's confusing sometimes. Uh, so what people do is the control vocabularies are standards, they will assign IDs to those terms so that you can just use the ID instead of the word. So uh, the programmatically we will access that information. When you use the ID, we will get the information, okay, this is called trypsin. And then that's called metadata. And <clears throat> so with that kind of information, if these are, for example, these are three different resources, GDC, uh, proteomic data commons, and imaging data commons. If we are all using the same kind of terminology to describe the common terms across these resources, any tool I can use without uh, much hassle. And finally, reusable. So reusability comes with the standards like that, uh, that I mentioned. So for PDC, we use a lot of standards from the proteomic standards uh, initiative. So PSI is a special body within the uh, HUPO uh, that formulates guidelines, how, to, how do you represent the data. Uh, and also uh, both the formats of the files and also the control vocabularies that needs to be used. It's not as mature as in genomics, uh, but it's slowly getting there. Uh, I think uh, uh, in the next uh, several years, so we will probably have more, uh, more structured terms that people will start using. So uh, at this time, we are, I mean, the, that itself actually has about 100 plus terms that you can use. But at this time, we could only map about 10 of them to the metadata that we are collecting. Just a general example of why we need standards. I just wanted to show you this. So, the plug points. Uh, yesterday I came, I came from US, so I don't have a converter. 
I do not need a converter, I just need an adapter. So, I was looking everywhere, I did not find one. But it is ok, when I go back to hotel, like I am just charging fully, that my computer is now fully charged. But anyways, so all these plugs, they are actually based on some standards, they are not random, right. Each country has different kind of standards and they are using. So, in such kind of situation, maybe you can have a converter or you can have an adapter as a solution. So, it is possible because you know those people are using standards. And here on the right, I am showing an example of how a date is being represented. You can write it in any way, right. So, probably it will make sense for some of you, but when you give it to the computer, it will get confused. So, then we come up with uh, there you come up with the standards, right. So, now we have some converter plugs and then we have ISO code, you have to represent the date in certain way. So, when you are submitting data to for example, PDC or GDC, we will tell if you are putting a date, it has to be like this right that is that is an example uh, simple example of standards. All right. So, why do we need standards? Because bioinformaticians who are into bioinformatics, they would actually understand this much easier. So, it is very if, if uh, the same data is sitting in different different forms, it is a nightmare for them. So, we just have to I mean the idea is like you, you just you want to compare the protein quantitation data with the gene expression data that you are receiving from GDC. Thing is like you have two files, so why do not we just compare? But if they are in different formats, if you are calling the different gene names and you have to write parts or some programs and there is so much effort, so you waste all your time. All right. So, just I'm, I, I put something here to give an idea of different resources. These are this is not very extensive, just, just a sample. Uh, for example, we use CADSR, uh, the Cancer Data Standards Registry and Repository for representing all of the clinical data information in the PDC and GDC. So, every term has a uh, 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 as a mention in the CDSR. <coughs> and then we know uh, for the next generation sequencing, uh, we all know there are some uh, very well adapted formats, fast use, BAMs and PCF fast and so on. All right. All right. So, proteomic standards. So, uh, like I mentioned there are there are a few already there. So, there is something or probably some of you might have heard about Miami. So, minimum information about a microarray experiment that was came like several years ago that basically tells it is it is it is a recommendation it is not a it is not uh, forced on you it is just a recommendation. Uh, when you are submitting some uh, microarray data to some uh, geo or uh, db gap. So, this is the minimum information you should provide. So, because it is just a recommendation or a guideline, if you go to geo database that is uh, uh, gene expression omnibus, it is a mess. There is so much data out there, but if you want to use it, there are actually papers meta analysis people just did correcting the data in geo. That itself is a scientific article, right. So, that is not worth it. So, the same way I mean in proteomics also they started off with ok, we do not want to force anybody with uh, standards at the to begin with, but we will tell ok these are the minimal guidelines you have to follow. So, that is my API minimum information about proteomic experiment right. All right. So, then we already have a lot of formats I will show you in the next screen and also we have uh, some control vocabularies from the uh, proteomic standards in initiative from PSI. All right. So, these are some standards like the representation MZML, MZIDENTML. So, a lot of things came out, but the widely adapted one is the MZML so far, because each piece of software that you are running, each pipeline, it generates a different kind of output. So, it is the, the field is not as mature as in genomics yet. So, but we are slowly going there. So, uh, the uh, expectation is that going forward maybe in the next several years. Uh, all these will be uh, <coughs> adopted. So, if they adopt like whether it is pride or paper data labs or proteomic data commons, if you have the same format of the file, you can easily compare two things is much easier ok. So, uh, with all that un in consideration, we did build that minimally viable product that I mentioned earlier. So, this as you can see there is only one program right now that is the CP tag, we started off with that. Uh, we have about this much 6 terabytes of data and this many proteins and peptides identified. Uh, so, a lot of summary information on the home page. Uh, we also have application programming interface basically whatever you do on the UI, uh, uh, you should be able to do programmatically also if you are 
efficient in the program. And this is the workspace I was talking about. I will show all this. And this is the uh, kind of uh, 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 common data analysis pipeline that we would implement within the system. And all right. So uh, before I end, I, I just want to touch base on the proteogenomic integration because that's what it is CPTAC is about and the proteomic data commons is about. So at the system level, when two systems are in, interacting like a PDC and GDC, what do we need, right? So there are some sequence centric proteogenomic approaches. So that's where if because all of this information is patient derived, patient centric, so there is genomic information available for the patient on the GDC side, right? So you want to use that information to run your searches against, against right? Uh, so, how would you get that information? So, uh, we in, in, the, in, the, the, in the model that we are uh, developing, uh, we are closely working with the, um, a framework team uh, from the NCI and also the genomic data commons and the cloud pilots. We are trying to figure out how to bring that information together so that when I say a patient, like when the PDC, when I look for a particular patient, it will automatically tell hey, there is some genomic data available for this patient at this resource, you want it, right? So that way you can get that information and put as input for your uh, proteogenomic experiment, uh, uh, sorry, database search. And then the other thing, so that's at the very high level, even before you start your pipeline, right? So then uh, if you actually generate <coughs> uh, the quantitation data already, so it's in the gene matrix, and then on the, PD, uh, on the GDC side, they already have the uh, FPKM, RPKM uh, information, gene expression. You, they have the bed files. They have the genomic variants. So you bring them and start correlating them, right? So that means here you are actually comparing the results from uh, two harmonization pipelines. You are not comparing the raw data. You are not doing anything there. You are using the information that came out of the pipelines and just comparing them. So the R examples that you are trying, they are best trying to basically do that. And finally, can we see all the peptides that we identified in the genome browser? So yeah, you can. You can download the information and you can generate the bed file and you can upload and do all those things. But we are trying to do that for you. For any given data set, it will be automatically available. Uh, so these are the some visions. I will show some data uh, what is already there. Later. Yeah, so uh, the idea is PDC will do some basic analysis for you. So when you go there, you already have all these reports generated. But if you want to change something, the personal workspace I talked about earlier, so you can do all those things in your own workspace without affecting the, uh, the public side, right? So whatever we provide is actually for everyone. On that data only, not on the data on which I am working here. Yeah, so the, the high level goal is we have all this information on the PDC data portal, which doesn't have a login. You go and just go there and analyze. But you have some data that you want to actually see correlate with what is already there. So you want to analyze your data alongside of the data that's already there. You should be able to do it in the workspace. So you load all your data, provide all the metadata, so that there will be tools available for you to do that kind of analysis. All right. So this is one use case we actually got. Somebody asked us, okay, I know there is a genomic information available in a pretty proteomic study, and how can I actually seamlessly integrate all this information? This is the use cases I was talking about. So, so uh, the way we implement at the systems level is like find all the projects in PDC that have genomic data. That's a very easy way to ask, but we add this, find all the programs that have in GDC that have proteomic data. Like you can ask that question whichever way you want, right? In different combinations. The system should be able to do that. So that's where we are trying to lead to. So some more examples of the same thing. All right. <coughs> 
So I'll just summarize here. So uh, we right now the Prodium Big Data Commons is in build phase. So like I said, six months ago uh, we built the MVP. We started building the MVP and we released that on uh, at Hupo uh, meeting uh, in October. Uh, so we got some feedback, uh, but in terms of the uh, uh, system, like I, I talked about all of these things, uh, but basically we'll have storage, workspaces, tools, and containers, models, and orchestration. Um, so you plan early. What can you do with this, this information right now? So if you have data, you have some ideas now. I, I think I convinced you to what to do. Uh, if you have no data, that's okay. I guess some people came to me and said, like, we are interested, but I don't have any data. Where do I start? So there is so much data out there. You can start looking at that. And where the data will live, uh, at least in the PDC side, we say it's in the cloud. And uh, if you do not make it public, you are the owner of the data. So I hope today you have learned that the PDC data portal consists of all the omics data on a single platform with UID given to each data set or patient which will remain same across the world. It enables users across the globe to access and reuse the data. You also learned about Proteomics standard initiatives or PSI and importance of such initiatives. You also got a glimpse that how difficult it is if the same data exists in different formats. Hence, a converter or a standard notion could play a major role in developing repositories which are accessible to all. We also learnt about proteomic standards being used currently such as MZML, MZIdentML or MZQuantML and others. So, in the next lecture we will shift topics, we will talk about data independent acquisition and swath atlas by another guest speaker. Thank you.